Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the simple linear regression. The simple linear regression is a statistical method that's going to allow us to summarize and study a relationship. Relationship is between two variables. Two variables. What type of relationship do they have? Do they affect each other? If so, how? Are they affecting each other positively, negatively? When one goes up, the other one goes down. When one goes down, the other one goes up. Are they related altogether? So on and so forth. So in a simple linear regression, you need to be aware of the component of the equation or the component of the regression elements. We have what's called independent variable. The independent variable, it's also called the predictor. The variable that's being manipulated to observe how it affects what we call a dependent variable. For example, the classic example for the independent variable, in my opinion, from a business perspective, is marketing. So on the x-axis, we're going to say this is the x-axis and the independent variable is marketing. And we are going to manipulate marketing. We are going to increase marketing or decrease marketing. And what we want to know is what is the effect on our marketing on sales? So sales is the y variable and that's sales. The variable that's being studied and is changing in response to the independent variable. Well, the independent variable is marketing. So how is y being manipulated by x? What do we see here? What we see is this. Let's assume this is 1k, 2k, 3k, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. What do we see? We see as we increase mar our marketing budget, our sales, notice, our sales is going up. So what's the relationship? We would, we would say this is a positive relationship. Notice here, and as we increase marketing, overall, overall, sales is going up. Now what we do is we draw a line in the middle of all these points. We just draw a line in the middle. And this line looks like it's a positively slope. It's going up. It means there is a relationship between marketing and sales. Remember, the marketing, the independent variable is marketing, and the dependent variable is y. y is the sale. Let's go ahead and study some other elements in this simple linear regression. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. One thing we need to be aware of when we compute a simple linear regression is we're going to have something called coefficient of co correlation. Now, in this session, since this is for the CPA exam or the CMA exam, I am working with already completed linear regression. So I'm not computing the linear regression. I'm just showing you how to read it how to interpret the results. So when you compute li linear regression, one of the elements that you will need to compute something called coefficient of correlation. And this could be, it could range just from negative one, from negative one, zero to one. So what does that mean? It's the measure of the strength and the direction of the linear relationship between the two variable. In other words, it's measuring the strength of the relationship. Okay, they are related, but how strong are they related? How strong are they related? The value could range from negative one to one. Well, let's see. If it's positive one, if, if the coefficient of correlation have to be happen to be positive one, well, what does that mean? Positive one, it means there's a perfect positive linear relationship. What does it mean, perfect positive linear relationship? If you want to say perfect positive, it means for every dollar I increase in marketing, I would increase sales in dollar. Another dollar, I would increase it in a do another dollar. This is called the perfect linear relationship. Seldom there's a perfect re linear relationship, but nevertheless, you need to know that the, max the, the, the ideal is one, not the ideal, the maximum positive relationship is one. So I increase sales by a million, I increase my marketing by a million, sales go up by a million. Then the relationship 
could have a coefficient of correlation of negative 1. It's the exact opposite, and we're going to talk about an example. Indicate a perfect negative linear relationship. Now it's the opposite. Now it's the exact opposite. Think of it, but it's, that's not how it works. The more marketing I do, the less is my sales. So notice it's sloping down, a perfect negative relationship. Then we could have zero coefficient of correlation, and there's simply no relationship. There's nothing to see. Well, we could increase marketing and sales could go down. We could increase marketing, sales could be up, so on and so forth. So there's no, it's, it's, it's random all over the place. There's no relationship. There's no relationship between marketing and sales. So this is called the coefficient of correlation. Remember, it's between negative one and one. Then we have to be familiar with the coefficient of determination. Again, you have to be differentiate between the coefficient of correlation, how correlated they are, and the coefficient of determination. This is the square of the coefficient of, of correlation and measures the proportion of, and measure the proportion of the variance in the dependent variable that is predictable from the independent variable. Here also we're, we're trying to see, in a sense, the strength of the relationship, but not the same strength. In other words, how much of the relationship is can be explained? How much of the relationship can be explained? Now, this is called the R square. This is, it's, it's R squared. And it ranges from 0 to 1. So don't confuse the coefficient of correlation, which goes from negative 1 to 1. And the coefficient of determination goes from 0 to 1. So it's, in a sense, it's from 0 to 1. There is no negative. If we have 0, it means that the model does not explain any variability in the, res in the response variable. If the answer is 1, if the coefficient of determination is given at 1, it means it's perfectly, it perfectly explained the variability. So if we have a coefficient of 1, it means we are 100% sure those two, those two elements, the dependent and the independent variable, they work together and the relationship is perfectly explained. Seldom, seldom that's the case. Seldom the relationship is 0 or 1. The best way to illustrate this is to actually look at an output just to see how it, how it looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph hours study by increment of 0.25 of an hour, 0.5 of an hour, just 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and an hour, and the test scores. And we're going to graph them. And let's try to read how do we interpret this. And the graph above, or the graph on the side, the blue points represent the data for the hour studies versus test scores. The red line is the regression line which best fits our data according to the least square method. So the red line is supposed to be right in the smack middle of all these points. And we can explain this relationship in this formula, which is the test score, how to come up with a test score when we run the regression, equal to 4.22 plus 2.986 times hours studied. May be familiar with this formula from y the total cost of something equal to a plus b x from a total cost just because for the cpa exam you need to be familiar with this apply this in a business term i'm trying to show it to you from an understanding perspective so equal to total cost a is the fixed cost and b of x b is the variable component so B is the slope of the line, slope, and X is the variable, whatever, for example, whatever we are using the variable times the variable component. Now, from the test scores, what we're saying is this. If the students don't study, and I want you to imagine this line touching 4.22 at 0. So at 0, if, if 0 is supposed to be here, not here. And if we extend the line, if the person don't study at all, they will get 4.22 as a test score. This is basically fixed. It means even if they don't study any hours, they're going to get 4.22. And we're going to assume this is over 10, and this is an outliner, or we, have, we gave some extra credit. So the maximum score is 10. Now, then what we see is this. As the students study more, we notice overall as the students study more, it's not perfect linear, but we see as the students study more, their grade goes up. So if they, as they study more, so as, as they study 0.25, notice their grade is here. As they study half an hour, 
the grade is here as this 30.75 definitely there is a positive relationship is, is this positive relationship between those two as you study more your grade is higher now it's not perfect linear because certain students they can study for an hour and be more efficient than another student and some students can study for half an hour and be as, as efficient as the one that studied for an hour but the point is we know how to read this we know how to read this so let's go a little bit further so 2.965 is the slope of the regression line and 4.22 is the y-intercept it's mean at 4.22 you studied zero hours then for every time you put multiply that time by 2.2.968 for example 0.25 is 15 minutes not 0 0.25 0 0.25 of an hour is 15 minutes the slope indicate that for each additional hour study, the death score is predicted to increase by approximately 2.968. So for one additional hour, so one four full hour, if you study one full hour, generally speaking, we're going to see how how fit, uh, how strong is that relationship. You will earn 2.968 in addition to the 4.22. Now, the coefficient of correlation for this example, which is given to us as 0.864. So how strong is that relationship? It means... 86 time 86 percent of the time this one hour increasing 2.968 of the score is truly explained which indicate a strong positive re linear relationship between the number of our studies and the test score so overall for the majority of people if they put one additional hour of study they can increase their score by 2.68 the coefficient of determination is approximately 0.749 which is mean 74.7 seven of the variability in test score can be explained by the number of hour studies and that's not bad at all so we're kind of 74 75 percent sure that that relationship holds which is a strong relationship so this is a positive coefficient correlation we have a positive coefficient correlation we could this leaves in other words if 74 point 74.7 it means this leaves 25.3 of the variability being due to other factors not included in the model or random so we don't know 25.3 percent of the time there's some other factor that's affecting that relationship what is a negative coefficient negative coefficient is the opposite this basically we have r r r equal to negative one again if we're going to go from the marketing perspective which is it doesn't make any sense the more you market the lower is your sales notice as you move as you move to the right on the independent variable x marketing the lower is your sales since the coefficient r correlation is negative one it signifies that the relationship between the two variables is perfectly linear in practical term we could see this perfectly linear relationship in the financial market when you buy a put a put is you buy a put and a put does what the put on a stock means when the stock goes down the put value goes up if you have a put option on a stock which increases in value as the stock falls so this is the stock and this is the put as the stock price goes from ten dollars to 75 cent your put value goes up as your stock price goes down your put value goes up this is a negative it's a near near perfect negative relationship and that works in the real world another example to illustrate a negative relationship is the distance remaining to a destination and the distance traveled in a straight line if you're going through a destination if you start at if you start at a point 100 miles from your destination and you travel directly toward your destination the distance to the destination decreases exactly in one step with the distance you travel so the more the more you travel the less is the destination that's also a negative correlation for every mile you travel the distance remaining decrease by a mile so that's a negative coefficient of correlation then we have a zero co correlation coefficient here there's no relationship between the two a scenario where there's no linear relationship between the two variables mean that that a change in one variable does not predict does not cause there's no effect on the other factor the correlation in this situation will be zero which indicated no correlation for example consider the relationship between the number of hours a person spent on tv watch and their level of income it is likely there is no consistent relationship between those two variables some people with high income might watch a lot of tv and some people might watch a little bit of tv and this you know and they have a lower income so it doesn't they don't it doesn't explain one thing don't explain the other so the amount of tv so the amount of tv that you watch doesn't determine there is no effect on level of income so someone who watch a lot of tv could have a little bit of income or a lot of income and someone who watch 
a lot of TV or someone with a little bit of TV will have little income or a lot of income. So there's no relationship. The TV, watching TV and the level of income is not related. I believe it is, <laughs> but that's a different story. Uh, just I'm, I'm illustrating the point. In a scattered plot of such data, the points would widely be dispersed and would not form any pattern or line. So notice here, if you want to draw a line, it looks like this. This is what the line, and the middle line would look like this. Uh, so there's no there's no relationship. Reflect the lack of consistency or the linear relationship. So change in one variable do not go hand in hand with the changes in the other variable. So knowing the value of one variable does not help you predict the other because someone with a lot of money, or someone with watch a little bit of TV could have a lot of money and someone who doesn't watch any TV would have a little bit of money and vice versa. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from Farhat Lectures. What does the coefficient of correlation measure in a simple regression? Does it measure the slope of the regression line? Well, what is the slope of the regression line? The slope of the regression line tells you how much the dependent variable is explained and increased when the independent variable increased by one point. Remember, we have, again, X marketing, Y sales. So as X goes up by how much Y goes up, this is the slope of the line. And this is not the coefficient of correlation. The slope of the line is the slope of the line. How, what's the, how much the change, how much the dependent variable is expected to increase, assuming we have a positive relationship. So A is out. B, the intercept of the regression line. What is the intercept of the regression line? The intercept of the regression line, this is X and this is Y. So where does the line intercept the Y axis, which is the level of zero? Remember, we say this from a business perspective, this is fixed cost. Even if we have no activity, we still have to pay that fixed cost. So this is the fixed cost. This is the intercept of the regression. That's not the coefficient of relation. The strength and direction of the linear relationship between the two variables, that's the coefficient of correlation, de determine the strength and direction? And the answer is yes. The coefficient, you know, it's the R, measures how strongly the two variables are related to each other and in which direction. A positive value indicates a positive relationship. Again, marketing and sales. And a negative value indicates a negative relationship. The closer the coefficient to a 1 or negative 1, the stronger is the linear relationship. So I would say C is a good choice. The proportion of the variance in the dependent variable that is pred predictable from the independent variable. Well, that's a true statement. That's a true statement, but that's not the correlation coefficient. That's what, what is it called? The coefficient of determination. And this ranges from 0 to 1. The, the coefficient of correlation ranges from negative 1 to positive 1. Be careful between the two. So D, D is, it, 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 it is true statement, but it's not the coefficient of correlation. It's the coefficient of determination. What should you do now? You're going to go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional resources, multiple choice, additional lectures that's going to help you, whether you are studying for your CPA exam, accounting courses, or any other professional certification. Good luck. Study hard. Invest in yourself. The CPA exam is worth it. And stay safe.